I came across this article from the BBC where it was alleged the biggest GP chain in the UK was putting profit over patient safety by using less qualified staff. Better believe it. I was curious. I was like, who are these people messing up the primary care? Come to find out, they were talking about us. They were talking about La Familia. They were talking about physician goddamn associates. The reception to this piece was mixed, as one would expect. Some people felt their cries of mid level creep were finally being validated, whilst others felt this was a gross mischaracterization of the peer rule, and this article painted it in quite a negative light, which they believe will affect the general public's perception. Which will increase the already existing pressures on GPs. This article is the product of an undercover investigation by the BBC into what appears to be a poorly run and understaffed GP practice owned by Opros Health, the biggest GP chain in the UK with over 600,000 patients and approximately 70 practices across the UK. During the investigation, it emerged that the physician associates working within the practice were not receiving the needed supervision and were being utilized like GPs. This was confirmed both by the PAs themselves and a locum doctor that used to work at the practice. According to the article, when the manager of the practice was questioned why physician associates were being utilized, this was because <laughs> Personally, I think there are two things going on with this article. The truth and the use of some editorial dark arts. The truth is, no physician associate is a doctor and we cannot replace GPs. That goes without saying. Especially not a newly qualified physician associate on your first job. However, the title of this article in the Panorama episode gives the impression that the presence of physician associates at the general practice is inappropriate from the get-go, which is totally untrue. And this was highlighted by the locum GP that had previously worked in the practice and the senior GP of an unrelated practice. They were fantastic colleagues and trained to do certain roles, but not trained to basically do as much as a GP. They were doing the same job as us with less experience, less qualifications and earning less money. Which tells me physician associates do have a role in primary care but supervision is needed. One could argue that physician associates are being overly sentimental about this article and the way it has been structured. But I would argue otherwise. If an article were titled, junior doctors are demanding 25% of pay increase whilst the cost of living soars for the most vulnerable in the UK. The first thing that would run through anyone reading that title's head would be, look at these selfish privileged nitwits. However, if that same article were titled, after a 30% broad term speaker, junior doctors are seeking a 20% restoration to keep up with the growing cost of living. Any sensible individual would come to the conclusion that it was about time. So how things are framed do matter and it changes how the reader experiences what is read over there. This draws a parallel with an interview Alfred Hitchcock gave regarding cotton and how it can be changed to create a different idea. Now we have a close up. He saw a woman holding a baby in her arm and he smiled. Now what is he as a character? He's a kindly man. He's sympathetic. Take the middle piece of film away, the woman with the child. But leave his two pieces of film as they were. Now we'll put in a, a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? The dirty old man. He's no longer the benign gentleman. Let me show you. We've been waiting for six months. Honestly, if I could help, I would. We discovered one practice seriously short of doctors. A backlog of important patient documents. And GPs were placed by cheaper, less qualified medical staff who were left without adequate supervision. We ask, is patient safety being compromised? They're putting profits, money ahead of quality of care. You see my point. How you sequence stuff matters. Some people argue because the training of a general practitioner normally is about 10 years and that of a physician associate tends to be a bachelor's degree and a postgraduate master's course. The presence of a PA within the primary care is inherently dangerous to patients because training is much shorter. I wholeheartedly disagree with this point. Physician associates 
are trained and tested specifically as generalists to be able to fit within the primary care setting with the appropriate supervision. Supervision is important. No one is denying that. And no one can tell me the presence of the physician associate in the primary care is inherently dangerous. The same way one wouldn't argue that junior doctors like FY1s or FY2s seeing a patient in a hospital is inherently dangerous because consultants are the senior most experts in that department. Yes, unlike physician associates, they are both doctors. However, a consultant and an FY2 are two different beasts. But one thing is for certain, they are each as qualified as they are supposed to be for their role, likewise physician associates. On a less serious note, when the manager said physician associates were being paid 45 pounds an hour, well, I went closer to my screen. Because I'm not gonna lie, for a brief moment, I thought, maybe these operas folks, they are not really that bad, you know. 45 an hour. I know I'm not getting that. Is there something I'm missing? Those bros at operas, please give me that blueprint. I might need to do some renegotiations because that is lit, absolutely lit. But of course, without the supervision and if you're a newly qualified physician associate and you feel you are not getting the supervision needed, the FPA has made available resources to help you navigate this. Link in description. The truth is, patients are ultimately the responsibility of the doctor. However, as a physician associate, you are responsible for your own actions. Only do what you are comfortable and trained to do. If a trust were to ask an FY1 to carry out a whipple and something went wrong, I don't think the FY1 could just wash his or hand and say it was the trust's fault, they will be held accountable. I believe the same should apply to PAs. We should know our limits. It's your boy, Yoti, and I'm out. Salute!